Hi, I'm Terrell Bracken. I'm Brady McLean. Tonight we're bringing you ICF 28, Fights Under the Lights from Great Falls, Montana. This is an exciting show because it's Fusion Fight League's first show since the takeover of Intense Fighting Championships. And this is called Fights Under the Lights because it's an outdoor show at beautiful Centene Stadium. We'll be right back after these messages. Well, let me tell you about America, down roads you don't ever see. Versus on billboards, cash crops and a coffee. Gripping hardies in the parking lot, popping biscuits in the back seat. Losing lighters in my friend's couch, with the game on the TV. Going hard at the hardies, real hard with my hardies. Beat car, all stars, going down like the sun. Thick burger clutching with my bros out back, hanging for no good reason. Drive through, same through, sweet thickness in my eyes. Walk in the backyard, shakes held high, that's America past them fries. Let me introduce you to the BF Goodrich All Terrain TA KO2 Tire. With technology designed to conquer the harshest terrain on earth, the KO2 is BF Goodrich's toughest all-terrain tire ever. And now, that Baja-born toughness is ready for you. Whether you're at work or at play, take on your toughest road challenges with confidence. Turn to the experts at Wayland Tire to find the right BF Goodrich tire for whatever you drive. Wayland Tire. We know tires. We've got Logan Gordon, 1 and 0, fighting at 185, stands 6 feet tall. He's 29 out of Ronan, Montana. Casey Park, 0 and 0, his debut fight, 185 pounds, 6 feet tall out of Team Wolfpack. Yeah, absolutely. Casey's going to be an exciting fighter, wrestling background. Logan's a lot of fun to watch as well. And we've got Dave Evans as the referee. There we go. Feel each other out a little bit. Kind of a Denver Broncos team we got going tonight. Absolutely. Kind of interested to see if uh, Casey stands or if he wants to go right to the ground. It looks like he's looking for a shot, and Eric gets it. And Big takedown. Into side control. See what he does with this here. You don't want a wrestler with solid hips on top of you in side control, that is for sure. And he's looking to pass. Gets back half guard. Half guard, excuse me. Looking to soften him up with some. Some punches from top. I don't think Casey Park would be a very fun person to have on top of you, that's for sure. But now Gordon's getting to his feet. He stands up and separates. See what happens with the heavy hands from Gordon. See if he can put some hurt on him. Good outside leg kick. See if Park looks for another takedown or if he'll exchange a little bit. He got the first one willing. He's one for one so far. Nice turning back kick from Gordon. Tough kick to land. Another outside leg kick. Those pay off in later rounds. Doing a good job with that circular motion. Gonna make it a little, little trickier for Casey to get the takedown, but those high kicks aren't gonna. And he's in. We'll see if he can get two for two here. Looks like he's got his hands locked and he gets it into side control again. He'll be careful not to let him up this time. He's got an underhook on that right side. And he's looking for a crucifix position. Moving back into half guard here. Good defense from the bottom. Let's see if Casey's going to be content to keep that half guard ground and pound game going or if he's going to try and move to side control and mount. A lot of wrestlers actually really like being in half guard. They kind of sit on that leg and they'll use that for ground and pound and to work from that. <laughs> see, he goes to a headlock. He's going to let him back up, but he's keeping his headlock. Let's see what he does with it. Looks for a foot sweep. 
Doesn't get it, and they're separated. A couple of deep breaths from Park in this first round. Takes a lot of energy, a lot more than what people think. Yeah, those takedowns, and especially when someone gets back up, it can be a little disheartening. You work hard for that takedown, and then they're back up, and all your work is for naught. Good right hand by Park. And that'll close out our round one. We're going to two. Nice fight to start the night off with. It's going to be interesting to see how each fighter makes adjustments. Yeah, we've got kind of a classic, uh, you know, it seems to me that we've got a, a wrestler versus striker matchup here. Um, Park was able to secure a uh, takedown just about every time he wanted to. Good defense standing back up, but in the judge's eyes, that's probably going to work him for the first round. We'll see what kind of adjustments uh, they make out of the corner. Uh, absolutely. Got our instant replay by Alias Smith and Jones Pond. Big, nice takedown. Yeah, that double played well. Nothing hits you harder than the floor. Is that right? That's been my experience. Yeah, it like, it's like these guys might hit you harder than the floor. I don't know. I've been hit and I've been thrown, and the floor is pretty hard. I'll just stay right where I'm at. Hurts bad enough just being out here. Well, here we go, round two. I'm kind of excited for this one. Round two, see what kind of adjustments they make out of the corner. Uh, both had a, you know, their, their moments of success. Their goal is obviously to uh, make more of those on your side. So, see what adjustments they make. Here we go with round two. Faints and fakes. Park seems to be waiting for that opportunity to go. You know, I just have a feeling that if uh, Casey would let those hands go, I bet he is a heavy-handed individual, too. I definitely think, yep, going to nope. stick with his ground, his, his ground game, uh, game plan there, and I think that's the best idea, but, oh, good exchange. Good exchange, he's back up, looks for a foot sweep. Yeah, it takes a little bit to get the hands loose. Kind of getting used to exchanging punches. Goes for a right hand there. Does Park, doesn't land, but he threw it with bad intention. Good knee. I think he felt that one a little bit too. He felt that one. There's a big looping overhand left that Casey throws. Yeah, you want that front hand, I mean, generally you want that front hand to be a, a range finder and a tap, tap, tapper, but he's, he's throwing it with the intention of finishing the fights with it. He doesn't feel like hitting soft tonight, it doesn't look like. Another outside leg kick. And he's taunting him for backing up. Clinch position here, gets another takedown right into side control. Ooh, big knee to the body. Big knee to the body. We'll see if he goes back into that half guard willingly or if he uh, chooses to stick in, in side control here. Going again for that crucifix position, but that's how he was losing it uh, in round one. He might secure a mount um, if he turns his hips over. Nope, and into Voluntary half guard. He's just going to sit on that leg and do some ground and pound from here. Yep, you know, Randy Couture said that was one of his favorite positions to just hang out in half guard and punish people, and he was very effective at it. Well, Jiu Jitsu guys thought they were going to be able to use that half guard to, to escape, and he would just pinch on it, sit on it, and keep him right in place. But I have to say, I've been really, really impressed with how Gordon continues to get back up to his feet time and time again. He's able, so far, every time he's been able to get back up and escape that ground and pound. Yep, yep. And gets his, up gets again. his headlock position and just works his way up. Got to get his back off the fence. See if, and Park gets him down again. Park's able to secure those takedowns every time he wants, but he hasn't been able to keep one yet. And that's the end of round two. We're going to three. Casey looks a little bit tired. 
cardio is always a factor for debut fighters. That's the one thing that always catches them off guard is absolutely how much energy it takes. My very first fight, Thomas Denny told me the one thing I needed to focus on was breathing. And that is absolutely the truth. You, know, you train everything, but you just can't train being in front of a crowd the very first time, somebody punching and swinging and kicking at you. I've heard the expression that cardio makes cowards of everybody. I don't think anything can make a coward out of Casey Park, though. He's a gamer. He's going to keep coming and coming. I have a feeling he'll recover fairly quick, too. And he's got his game. You know, he knows that these, these takedowns are working for him. He knows that he can land them every time so far, unless something changes. But a lot of times, by the time the third round happens, we kind of have a, a beat on how it's going. See what kind of adjustments we can make here. Um, he, he was able to secure a lot of those takedowns in the second round. Probably gave him the second round. Uh, we're probably looking at a, a necessary finish from the other side. Yep, I think so. I definitely scorecard favors Casey at this point. That said, I'm not a judge. But I am judgmental. <laughs> right well, hand I, right away. I think Logan's still, you know, fresh enough, got the power. I think he could still finish this fight at any given time with, yeah. with a hard punch. He is a heavy handed striker. Right hand landed there. Rowan with intention. His part. And the right hand thrown hard. Casey really fav favors those looping punches, and I think that's because of the, the size difference. It looks like it looks like Logan's got the reach advantage for sure. But it's always hard to be a hard striker when you've got to defend that takedown. Right, right. It's tough to let the hands go when you're watching your hips. And we'll see if he secures this one. Sure He's so. able to defend it. He's going to, oh, yep. And he finishes it into full guard this time. It's really nice to see how Casey slipped right in underneath that punch to, to get that takedown, to close that gap. He may be content here just to sit in full guard, land small punches, score on the judge's scorecard, and kind of ride out a win here. We'll see what happens. The thing about full guard, depending on how this guard is, there are a lot of opportunities for sweeps and submissions that he's going to have to avoid as a wrestler. There are no submissions in wrestling, so it can be a little bit of a weird thing when you got a guy on his back. That's when you finish in wrestling. So it's a, and that's just the beginning in jujitsu. He looks like he's pinning him down, content to land some small body body shots and just. Logan's opening and closing his guard regularly, looking to put a foot on a hip, trying to do a few things, working on arm control. Don't see him fitting for any sweeps. The half guard. And a half guard, and some ground and pound here. Logan's doing a good job of turning into the fight. He's got to watch this. Get himself in the head and arm there, but Parker feels like he wants to just keep beating on it. 30 seconds left Back in the round. Out, working for full guard again. Working some rubber guard here. So Logan's high guard secured. Logan's obviously working some jiu-jitsu. It's really tough to do with a guy like Casey that's got such a solid base. I bet he feels like a... Like, it looks like Casey's going to ride this one out. Uh, Round three, we'll go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. What do you think, T? Well, you know, I, I think obviously Casey can control a lot of the fight. Uh, just so many takedowns. Those, those takedowns rack up score after score after score. So that's that's pretty tough. I don't think that Logan did enough damage standing up to offset the takedowns and ground control of Casey. Yep, good fight, good fight overall. Yep, good opening fight for Casey Park, but I don't think we've seen the last of Logan. Definitely want to see Logan, uh, I'd like to see him against another stand-up striker and watch them go to war. Absolutely. Another fight coming up, stay tuned.
All right, we've got Gage Morissette out of SBG Kalispell, 145 pounds, standing five foot nine. He is 19 years old. He's taking on Ryan Scott Free, four and three record, 145 pounds, five ten, fighting out of. Where's he fighting out of? He's fighting out of Team Wolfpack, Great Falls, Montana. Wolfpack. Here we go, round one. Kicking off. See what kind of pace these guys start, and they go right at it. Big punches right off the bat from Morissette. Morissette gets the takedown, and he's going to pass. See if he looks to mount here, and he goes knee on belly, straight into mount. These straight blast guys are not rookies on the ground. Great ground game, real crisp ground game from every one of these, these straight blast Kalispell guys. And he's going to look to take the back, potentially try to take an arm here. Looks like he's got some hooks set in. He's going to work to get that right arm free and just take the back here. See if he softens him up. Let's get him to let that go arm is here. cranked so high, I don't think that Ryan can that, that yep. finally released that arm. Ooh. Big ground and pound here, looking to finish this fight in the first minute Ryan's of the opening round. Ryan's got to turn and face the fight. He's got to get off, got to get off his stomach and face up. And he's working. He's he's trying to raise, but he doesn't. You know, there's intelligent defense here. He's eating a lot of unanswered nope. shots, and that's the end of the fight. Exactly what should have happened. You got to turn into the fight. You got to face the fight. You cannot escape those punches from just covering up, not intelligently defending yourself. Got to look out for the fighters. That's a win for Morset. Win for Straight Blast Jim Idaho. Excuse me, Kalispell, Montana. Yep, absolutely great fight. Good stoppage from the referee Dave Evans. Like to see the fighters kept safe. Nobody's. Nobody's too worse for the wear. See our instant replay here. And this, this is when he escaped his arm, and as soon as he did, he had plans to finish this fight in the very first minute. I think we went a little over a minute. Got that alias Smith & Jones instant replay, showing that brutal ground and pound. Gage Morissette with the win. And that's the end of that one. We'll be right back after these messages. Best Western Plus Heritage Inn is more than just an inn. It's your everything. With Great Falls Best Conference Room and every amenity you could want. Why go anywhere else? Especially with the Max Sports Bar and Casino, who has your favorite game, drinks, food, and 16 flat screen TV. The Best Western Plus Heritage Inn and Max Sports Bar and Casino. You know, the first thing I'm going to say anytime you notice there's any water in the home, first thing I'm going to think about is safety. We have slip fall issues to think about. We want to keep the kids and pets away from the area. Second is make sure that we don't have any electrical cords or anything like that that could be in that water. As soon as you stand in the water and there's an extension cord in there, you may electrocute yourself. So if you're getting into those areas and you don't know for sure, you go out to your breaker, shut off the power to it, to, to that those rooms. That way you don't run the risk of electrocution on it. Go down there, inspect it then with flashlights, make sure you got any extension cords or whatnot out of the areas. Then you can go ahead and turn your power back on, extract that water and get it out. Water is the universal solvent. Almost everything breaks down in water. So it's important that we get to it the, the sooner the better to help minimize any mold or mildew growth that can happen within the home. but the energy just picked up around here. This is gonna be exciting. You know, I don't know whether, this could be a quick fight. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a real quick fight. 
This could be a this could be a war too. These guys could carry it out. This could go because they both got the stamina and go a long ways. These boilers are tough. Somebody's O's got to go. Here we go. The O's gotta go. Somebody's about to go home a loser for the first time. It's amazing how uh, that can you know, make somebody's career or break their It can really. Yep. Ooh, heavy hands. Great combinations. Good combinations. Three, four punch combination right there. And they were heavy combinations. They were. He's not afraid to stand and bang with him. No, these are the fights that uh, the fans want to see. You know, two guys stand up and bang it out. I mean, that's what that's what sells tickets for sure. For sure. You know, the skilled fighters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dakota's comfortable, Dylan's comfortable. And they're both relatively new to the sport, you know, maybe the past two years. Right, both 25, 21 years old, both undefeated at this point, both amateurs. Um, you know, they're kind of, this is kind of the top um, around here for amateurs at this age. Um, you know, after you start winning these kind of fights, you, you start looking at the professional level. Speaking of professional level, uh, Johnson Masson is going to be fighting later tonight. He's got three more fights before he goes to the pro, and he's on 14. Wow. Winch tree. Ooh, he's over cut. That hurt him. Ooh, Ooh answers good back. Good combination. One two. one, two, yep. That was beautiful. Answers back again. One, two right there. That's a nice uppercut. <laughs> nice good leg, bang leg kick starts to slow him down. That's a good idea. Yes. Ooh, ooh, that hurt him. Oh, Stunned him, oh, but he came oh, right back. Answered. Right back. He loves the fight, man. These guys. Wow, that's a dog pound for you right there. There it is. Yeah, he's seen that in camp. That's for sure. Ooh. Oh, good shot again. Answer. Went for the leg kick. I answered with a right. Tough kicks. Jeez, Louise. Oh, missed it by inches. <laughs> You see a little swelling in the left eye, Dylan. And I can't tell you the amount of like the training and the courage to stand in the pocket like he is, where dudes throwing heavy hands. They like he's sitting in the pocket and returning fire, right in the pocket. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. He's already, and he's already been hit with big shots. He knows it hurts. Yes. You know, training with the guys, the wife of Chris Sewell and the company of Doc. Yeah. You don't go home. No. I'm not too familiar with uh, Dakota's camp, but... Oh, oh, great shot! There it is! Oh, it's over! God. It's over! Oh, God. Oh, God. That's it! 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 Oh, my God! Let's go!
carries a record of one win and no losses. Fighting out of that match you just do in Seattle, Washington, Sammy Ireland! Iron out of the park lies in red corner. This man entered the cage at six feet two. Fighting out of three. We've got Taylor Macklin, five and three. He's fighting at 165 pounds. He stands six foot two, fighting out of Team Wolfpack in Great Falls. And he has taken on Sonny Ibanez out of Washington. Um, you know, meta jiu-jitsu fighter, uh, excellent fighter. And you got some, it looks like we're gonna have a little bit of a range discrepancy on this fight. We'll see how that plays out as we get ready to kick off round one here. Taylor stepped up to take this fight last minute. Good outside leg kick and throwing high. Taylor, these guys are kicking right off. Huge energy out of these fighters. Looks like Taylor ate a hard right hand right out of the gate there. And, he's and he gets, ooh, gets this takedown. That was a crisp takedown right into side control and they're up against the cage. I think Taylor's trying to put his head back together from that huge punch that he took. Getting some recovery time with an arm around his neck. Yeah, working on a standing guillotine. Here is Sonny. Tough to get that with the, with the arm in standing. A lot of times that really requires you to cover the back and, and crank that around to cover that. but. Well, especially with the lack of leverage because of the height difference. Got to make it really hard. He's holding on. He's digging an underhook there. Gets taken down again by Taylor. And Taylor's got that right side underhook, which is going to serve him well in this position. Soften him up with some punches. He's going to potentially look for a guillotine out of this position. But he's softening him up with these punches. Hard right hands that he's dropping in there. Sonny works to stand back up, and he does see if he can separate out of this position. Looks like he's in a tight headlock. Maybe a power guillotine here, and he and taps him. Here it is. Power guillotine submission, 125 left in our round one. What an exciting fight. There's a fight I'd like to see go back again, too. Fun fight. And for taking that on short notice, he did a he did a great job. Good striking, ate a hard punch, but recovered well. And yeah, that power guillotine, he threw that leg over, and that was that was the end of All it. All she wrote. Well, welcome back to the cage, Taylor Macklin. He's been out for a while, and boy, he came back with a vengeance Certainly against didn't. a really tough opponent in Sonny Ibanez. Yeah, sure didn't show when he was in rush, that's for sure. It wasn't much of a feeling out process, and there wasn't a real long fight no in time. round one. No time to waste. Let's get her done. All right, we've got Jacob Houck, five and six, fight, fighting at 175 foot 11 out of Freestyle in Billings, Montana. And he takes on Gage Saunders, 2 and 0, 176 1. He's fighting out of Great Falls from Team Wolfpack. These guys look ready to go. Yep, this will be a fun fight. You know, Jacob's had a tough time, but recently coming off of a really big win with Front Street Fights out of Idaho. Um, Gage Saunders, impressive win that he just came off of with uh, Miles Mazakevich. So, so both fighters' records are going the right direction now. This will be fun. 
And I know that Jacob has a, has a good boxing background. He's got lots of boxing uh, experience behind him. He was showing some good hands there just now, that's for sure. And he gives up the takedown, but he's looking for this guillotine. And he, he's cranking it. He's going to take a top position from the threat of the submission. Whoa. Looking for a dark scope here. The Is he going to get it? And if he raises that elbow, he's in a great position to secure this. Yeah, it's going to be a tough fight out of this position. And Gage is working on escaping, but that's tight in there. It doesn't look good. And he's, oh, hey, he gets a tap. That was a tap. That was a tap. It there was, it was. It, it was kind of a. I think he's of, out. He is out. Yep. I think he went to tap and kind of lost it right there in he the middle. Went to sleep right as he went to go tap. Wow. Big win for for Jacob Hauk and the first loss for Gage. You know, we've known that Jacob is a great wrestler. We know he's got great hands from his boxing background. But look at that darts. That is. And it's solid, you can see the elbow coming up high, and that will shut off the blood flow to the head and do exactly what you just saw there. Absolutely. Sing him a lowly vibe. Excellent instant replay from Alias Smith and Jones Pond. And uh, oh, what what a what a finish. Congratulations, Jacob Houck. <laughs> That's the end of that one. We'll be right back after these messages. Huh, what's up? Wait, you vape? You're usually such a control freak. I'm addicted. I used to smoke and vape. The only thing in control was the nicotine. And you have asthma. Yeah, but mine's just mild. It doesn't matter. It can still trigger an attack. I need to quit. Quitting is the best way to keep your asthma under control. Health in the 406, my friend, it's good. It's getting better. When traveling to Billings, come visit us at the Vegas Hotel. We're located off exit 450, close into downtown Billings with an easy shuttle to the airport. We've recently renovated and updated our facility. Our large rooms are outfitted with comfortable pillow top beds, high-speed Wi-Fi, HBO, and continental breakfast. Also in-house is American Classic Pizzeria and the Ace High Casino and Lounge. Call us at 406-248-7761 or visit us at thevegasmotels.com. Truck manufacturers these days are producing some pretty powerful trucks. That's why we designed the Michelin Defender LTX MS Tire. It's built with stronger advanced compounds that hold up to tougher conditions. The Defender LTX MS has outstanding all-season traction and excellent fuel efficiency backed by our 70,000-mile warranty. So whether it's a working truck or you're hauling your snowmobile or boat, you'll get the most out of every mile. Turn to the experts to find the right Michelin Tire for whatever you drive. Wayland Tire. We know tires. Something in you, you know. Absolutely. I don't get a shot like this this early in my career. Here we go. They're locked in the cage. Here we go. Let the bangs begin. Heavy and ooh. Good job. Stop Good job. Good job. This is where being a heavyweight comes to your advantage when you have to carry the opponent's weight as well as your own. Yeah. Looks like he's getting ready to try and go for a leg sweep here. Body shots by El Chapo. Yep, trying to fist in the head. Watch the back to head. Oh, El Chapo's. Those are heavy. Heavy, heavy hands. Now we're on the ground, see if 
We're in Big Sexy's territory now. Yeah, he likes. If, yep, this is where Big Sexy likes to be. He likes to uh, hand fight, see if uh, Chapel can keep him off him. Keep him off his wrist. Taking some big shots. El Chapel's in his guard. Trying to move up. Looking for a triangle. I'd imagine. Transition into the arm bar. On his, speak up by his shoulders and his head there. You gotta watch out for that jiu-jitsu guy. Yes. There's an, oh, got it out. I like that he went to the legs. Kicks was a two punch combo right after everything landed. And he's got smothered again up against the cage. Yeah, wide base. Nice wide base. Get the underhooks. Good work by El Chapo. I know Coach Joe McMillan with Team Wolfpack. He cannot stress the importance enough of the underhooks yes. in the fight game. Yep. And it's so true. Yeah, it'll be a good way to, you know, get off the cage right now, get his back off the cage and turn the fight around, get those underhooks, absolutely. He's just pushing, pushing, making carry his weight, his big sexy. But El Chapo's doing really, really well. Yeah, big sexy looks a little soft to the body. I think that, uh, that body work probably dividends later in the fight if it goes, goes long time. Yeah, he don't like that. He doesn't like that at all. Oh, he's got the cage. We see it. <laughs> that was just natural. No, he's just putting it back. So. <laughs> yep. yeah, he got away with it once. He knew he couldn't get away with it again. Heavy hands to the body on it. Shots to the body, yeah. That could be the difference later in the fight, I'll tell you what. Soaking those hammer fists. Oh, heavy shot. Those are heavy hands. Heavy. The ref might stop this. He's don't got much longer. He's warning him right now. Done, yes. Great fight, El Chapo. Good shot. Good, good fight. Another win for the Wolfpack here tonight. Great fight by a 19-year-old, 3-0 now with the belt. 3-0 with the belt. Now he's got a bounty. That's right. Busy hands. Yeah. You see here in the replay where he, he does just... have heavy, heavy hands. You know, don't even look like he hits him with much, but I mean, every time I see him fight, he hits him and they drop. I'm telling you. About five, six. Kids throwing six, bricks, oh. man. You can't take punishment like that and expect to continue to fight. No. You gotta, you gotta better yourself. Intelligently defend yourself. Yep. Referee Dave Evans gave him plenty of opportunity. Yeah, oh yeah. It was good stoppage. Yep. Absolutely. Good stoppage again. Dave's a great ref.
We got Dehan Kajic, seven and six, 170 pounds, fighting out of Team Diaz Combat Sports. And he takes on one of Montana's favorites, Timmy Welch, 14 and five, out of the lab in there in Arizona? Yep, Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix. the MMA Lab. MMA Lab, you know Benson Henderson, and you know uh, plenty of fighters out of that camp. He's been down there training for a while. He was originally from Missoula Dog Pound. Everybody loves Timmy Welch around here. We'll see how these guys uh, match up. So yeah, this will be a fun, exciting fight. Tim coming in with some inside leg kicks to open up round one. They seem to want to get right into it. Not a big feeling out process. They're clinched up here. They separate. Looks like Dehan's got a very powerful base, huge, thick thighs. I think he's got, oh, big, big punch from Tim. And Tim has a left hook that will knock out a truck. Big overhand right from Tim Welch. Dehan felt that. Reached up, wiped his nose. Dayon looks to be in great shape as well. He's a he's not a small 170 pounder. Big, strong welterweight. You can see just solid base in his legs. And same with Tim. These guys are athletes. These guys are are professionals for a reason. That's for sure. There's that left hook thrown by Tim. Tim working for a takedown, doesn't get it. Stands right back up, separates. Good sportsmanship, shown by Dehan. Dehan's carrying that left, awful low. See if Tim's gonna exploit that. These guys have a little bit more respect after trading a few. Good jab by Dehan. Left to the body by Tim. Good jab by Dehan. These guys are exchanging a couple of smaller punches, not committing as much after feeling each other's power. And Dehan's working to keep it a little bit more in the middle of the cage than he was before. Timmy's stepping in with some power here. See if these guys get a little bit more comfortable with their combos. So fun to watch Tim stalk his opponent. He does quick fake a takedown and goes for the goes upstairs and he comes in here. He's gonna get the clinch. He's got an underhook. Works to secure this takedown against the cage. We'll see if he can get it, and he does. Dion working to get back up. But Timmy's gonna keep those out. legs, drag him out. Good takedown, good securing of the takedown by Tim. He's gonna work to get past that butterfly guard here and land some top game. And Tim is a heavy striker. His top game is not going to be fun to be underneath for Dehan. See if Dehan can work his way up. He's looking to get back up, and he does quickly. Man, springs to his feet. Cage control, name of the game. Little jab by Dejan. So much fun to watch these guys. Ooh, big overhand right. Dehan's not gonna hang out and... and these guys have slowed down a little bit, you know, they show they've they've felt each other's power. Uh, they've, they've exchanged in a few different positions. There's been some ground, there's been some clinch, they've exchanged on the outside. They're kind of trying to find their way. Both of them finding little bits of success here and there. 
Uh, but no one finding a big, bright, shiny. And a big punch by Dehan there. A big, a big knee. knee. This could. He's covering up. That was T a Tim, hard knee. Tim has heart for days. He will fight out of it. As long as he is conscious and the, the lights are still on, he'll keep on fighting. But that was a tough punch and a big knee. Great exclamation to the end of this round. We've got 20 seconds left in it. And that was a that was a scary moment for Tim. Some ground and pound landed here by Dejan. Yep, sharp, sharp right. Ten seconds. Looking like we'll go to two. Let's see if Dejan pours it on for the end of the round. And that's it. We're going to two, ladies and gentlemen. Great, great round, great exchanges for both fighters, but a shining moment for Dehan at the end of that round one. Yeah, let's see how they look. Dehan doesn't look too tired. It doesn't appear to be too winded at all there. We get a look at the instant replay here and see that shot. And there's that knee, just went right into it. Rough, rough knee, but like I said, Tim Hart for days, he's not quitting unless it quits for him. And he'll make some adjustments. Great corner, uh, you know, experienced fighter. He'll make some adjustments coming into this round too. Um, and, and Dejan will too. He knows that he's got some power. He knows that he finished real strong. He's gonna have some confidence coming into the second round. We'll see what kind of adjustments they make and what we get out of this. Michael Hill in there as Dejan's coach. Tim's got some blood coming out of the right side of his mouth. I see that. I was looking at that. Back to the inside leg kick for Tim Welsh and a big straight right hand. Tim's moving forward, stalking him. He's going to try and put it back on him and get that back. Good sportsmanship from the fighters. I think that might have been an accidental hand up by the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Sharp punch. They're trading. Sharp jab from Dayhan. And they traded that jab. But Dayhan, Dayhan's definitely looked like it made a little bit more impact. Tim looks like he's got his mouth open. Two unanswered leg kicks. So this type of guy that will eat a leg kick and throw one down the middle and knock uh, you out. Absolutely. Oh, and he goes high with it. So a couple of inside from Dayhan, and he goes high, blocked by Tim. Great defense by Tim Welch. Right hand by Tim Welch. Good job by Timmy. Excellent movement. Both these fighters just very calculating. And they're absolutely fresh after that first round. And, you know, Tim had definitely a, a scary moment at the end of that round, but he's back in it. His head's back in it. He's looking fresh. He's striking crisp. His eyes are very sharp. Moving forward. I think either one of these fighters could end each other at any minute. Oh, there's that good left. left follow up. Man, that left connects for Tim. Like I said, you're knocking out a walrus. I don't know if dehan has got a better chin than a walrus, but he's going to want it if he's going to eat one of those clean. Good punch by Dehan. Just get that feeling the first person to make a mistake is the first loser. Well, you saw you saw just a very short mistake at the end of that first round, and that was a, that was a scary moment. Someone uh, a lesser man than Timmy Welch might not have made it out of that, but he did, and he's in on a single here, looking for a looking for a leg sweep against the cage here. That's how fast that shot was! He ends up on his back off of this. We'll see what Dehan can do in in top half guard. Got good shoulder pressure. 
loses that. Timmy working for an overhook from the bottom. See if he can work him, work his way out. And Tim's hip escaping. He's trying to get out of this position while at the same time keeping Dehan's posture broken down so he can't land big punches from the top. Trying to work that right side butterfly hook in. See if Dehan might work for this head and arm. Flattens him out, looks for that head and arm. Not there. And good. Tim, Timmy, I was going to say, he wants, wants to work for that underhook and he gets it and he improves his position here. He's working to stand up. Dehan working to take the back. These guys are in kind of a funny dogfight position with Dehan working the back, trying to look him to secure that arm. We'll see how these guys come out of this. And they're back, Dehan back to topside half. You, know, you, you cannot question Tim Welch's toughness. He's got the experience. He knows how to weather a storm. Dehan looks like he's got heavy, heavy pressure, though. Just looks really, really heavy pressure, especially from his shoulders. For sure, and he's keeping both underhooks here, which it makes it hard to move. It's hard to progress on top, but when you're on top, you know, and he takes the back, takes the back. here, landing some heavy shots. When you're on top, you know, the, the pressure's not on you. Oh, and beer, beer naked. naked choke, that looks like it's in. And that, that's, and that's, the count. that's the end of the fight, ladies and gentlemen. Rear naked choke win for Day Hahn against Timmy Welch. That's going to be a bummer for Montana fans, but a great win for Day Hahn. There is an upset on the night, no doubt about it, but good sportsmanship between the two fighters. Just slick transition to the back. Yep, here we see. Just shoves that right hand in. Shoves that right hand in for the rear naked choke and when, right when Tim lifted his chin. And Tim lifted his chin relatively quickly there. Dan did a good job of hiding his hand on the back of the head. Lots of pressure. Great work from both of these fighters. You know, they both had their, their moments. Um, some big strikes, some good clinch, some good ground game, good escapes. He's got some pretty good blood coming from his mouth there. And you know, seeing Tim with his mouth open and coming, going into that second round, I wonder if he's having some issues. It doesn't look like... He's holding his jaw, yeah. That knee might have done it. Yeah, I, Tim's jaw doesn't look right. Con congratulations to Dayhan on a yep. big win over a Montana legend. Absolutely. It was a great, great fight. Great fight. Uh, yeah, upset finish, but so much fun to watch. Let me tell you about America. Down roads you don't ever see. Versus on billboards. Cash crops and a coffee. Gripping hardies in the parking lot. Popping biscuits in the back seat, losing lighters in my friend's couch, with the game on the TV, going hard at the Hardee's, real hard with my Hardee's, beat car, all stars, going down like the sun, thick burger clutching with my bros out back, hanging for no good reason, drive through. Same through sweet thickness in my eyes. Walk in the backyard, shakes held high. That's America past them fries. Bareback riding takes a special kind of person. It takes somebody that's willing to deal with all odds against them. It's the most physically demanding event in rodeo and there are a lot of guys that chew tobacco, and I've seen my friends have the start of cancer in their lip, and they change it from top to bottom rather than quitting, and I've run across guys who have to push a button to speak to me because they've gotten throat cancer, and it takes a special person to ride a bucking horse, and if you can do that, then you can kick the habit of chewing. In rodeo, you never back down from a challenge, so I challenge you, quit chewing today.
Well, we had it all tonight. Knockouts, upsets, exciting finishes across the board. Another great night of fights from Fusion Fight League. They seem to just keep getting better and better. And we're going to keep going that direction. Make sure you come back and check out the next one. Thanks for joining us tonight.